In a shocking incident that has left the community reeling, two adults were found shot to death in a Frederick County, Maryland home early Sunday morning. The chilling discovery was made by the victim's four kids, sparking a major double murder investigation. As details emerge, the search for answers intensifies. What could have led to this tragedy? Stay with us as we dive into this unfolding tragedy. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Please like, and subscribe to our channel for more incredible real life stories. On Sunday, August 25th at approximately 7 a.m., Frederick County Sheriff's deputies were called to a residence in the 7,000 block of Mandalong Court in Newmarket. The 911 call was made by the 10-year-old child of the female victim. Upon responding, deputies found the deceased victims, later identified as 33-year-old Crimea Baker and 34-year-old Sean Lang. They were shot multiple times in an upstairs bedroom. Investigators say they recovered 42 shell casings from inside the home. A preliminary investigation indicated the victims were shot at approximately 1.25 a.m. Four children, who were also found inside the home, were unharmed. Deputies said the children were all 13 years old or younger. Detectives believe the victims were living together at the time of their murders. Baker is the mother of all four children found inside the home. Sean is the father of the youngest child. Sean also has three other kids with his ex-wife. Jessica Wilson says she's known Crimea since elementary school and that they grew up together in Illinois. We're like sisters. She was just such a fun human being. We're praying for justice for both Sean and Crimea, just so that the kids can have some sort of peace. Tiffany Poston, a friend of Crimea said, I knew as soon as I met Crimea that she was somebody that I wanted to have in my life because she was just so beautiful and she was such a good person. Sean Lang was described as someone who lit up an entire room. He lit up the entire room, whatever room he was in. His smile was just contagious. He was an amazing person, an amazing father. Sean was an eight-year army veteran and father of four. His family says he was an amazing person, talented martial artist and loving father who hoped to join the Secret Service. Lang's ex-wife said their three young kids keep asking for their dad and can't understand why he isn't coming home. Not only a piece of me is gone because he gave me my beautiful children. It's just like a piece of my children is gone too because it's like, I want daddy. My kids ask so many questions, mommy, why this, why this happened? It, I'm just like lost for words to explain why this happened because I don't know. Sean and Crimea didn't deserve for this to happen to them. Like, how can someone be so cruel to take my brother away from me the way they did? On Saturday, September 28th at 6.20 p.m., Fort Lauderdale police and the FBI arrested 33-year-old David Turner of Miami, Florida for the murders of Crimea and Sean. David Turner is the ex-husband of Crimea. Turner is charged with two counts of first-degree murder, home invasion, and two counts of use of a firearm in a crime of violence or felony. He is currently being held at the Broward County Sheriff's Office Jail in Florida, awaiting extradition back to Maryland. Hey everyone, DJ here. I want to jump in on this story because I want to give a little bit more context of what really went on in this situation. Crimea was a 33-year-old mother of four kids and Sean was a 34-year-old father of four kids. Now Crimea and Sean only had one kid together so they both had three other kids with different people. They were both married before. Crimea broke up with her ex-husband primarily because he became abusive. When she left him he kept the kids from her and wouldn't allow her to see her own kids. So she had to go to court and she won a judgment to get her kids back. She got divorced and she also got child support. Sometime after that, she met Sean and they got into a relationship and they moved to Maryland from Illinois and they were living together. Sean was living with Crimea and her four kids. The last kid was his. And one day, Crimea's ex drove 1,000 miles from Florida to Maryland, got into the house via the back door and murdered Crimea and Sean while the kids were in the house. Just imagine... Someone is so upset with you that they drive a thousand miles to kill you, the mother of his kids. Now, if I had to guess why he was so upset, I would say it's more than likely because of child support. So apparently, this guy was upset that he was paying child support, and that is probably what triggered him. I don't know exactly what triggered him because he didn't say, but I can surmise what she could have possibly done when they wasn't even in a relationship. They haven't been in a relationship since 2018 and she was killed 
in 2024. That's like six years apart. So it's not like they just broke up and he's in the heat of the moment and he killed her. That's not, that's not what happened. I assume this guy didn't want to pay child support anymore and he decides he's going to kill her so he won't have to pay child support. The ex-husband's name is David and he went to the back door, went inside, went upstairs to the bedroom and fired around 42 shots at Crimea and Sean, killing them on the spot. While he's firing all these shots in the house, the kids are downstairs, hiding for their lives, thinking that they could be next. And these kids are from age, I believe it was 13 and under, and there were four kids in the house. And after David shoots Crimea and Sean, he leaves the house and he drives back to Miami, Florida, another thousand miles. This guy drove a thousand miles to murder someone and drove a thousand miles back. The kids in the meantime, they were so scared they did not come out of the hiding place for hours. When the kids finally come out, thinking um, everything is safe, a 10 year old child called 911 and told them what happened. And the cops came and the investigation started. Can you imagine the kind of people that's walking amongst us? That's so evil. They will drive a thousand miles to kill the mother of their own kids. These people are evil, selfish, self-centered, low lives, no morals. Let me tell you something. When you're in a relationship, when you meet someone, try to gauge of their moral fabric. Ask a couple of questions because if someone has no morals, that person could kill. Listen to me. If someone has no morals, that person is a potential murderer. So if that person don't give a shit about nothing, when it's time for you and that person to break up, the first thing that's going to get in that person's mind is to harm you. And let me tell you this, Crimea was abused by her ex-husband. Let me tell you something. If you're a woman and you're listening to this podcast, listen very carefully. If you're in a relationship and a man has physically abused you, when it's time for that relationship to dissolve, when you decide you want to leave that relationship, 9.9 out of 10 times, that violence is going to escalate. So that means that if somebody has hit you in any way, abused you, and you think you're about to leave, your life is going to be in imminent danger. You have to plan to get away from this person, whether it's your husband or your boyfriend. You can't just say, hey, the relationship is over and I want to be gone. That's not going to work with someone who is abusive. Someone who is abusive, they don't look at you as a partner, as a loving wife or girlfriend. They look at you as their property, like they own you. So no matter what they do to you, you can't go anywhere. So don't judge someone by the words that they say. Whether they say they're a good person or whether they say they're a religious person. Judge someone only by their actions. Listen to what they say and match it with their actions. See what they do. That will tell you the true fabric of who someone really is. Because a lot of people, they get into a relationship, everybody puts up a facade, everybody shows the best side of them. Eventually that curtain comes down. That's why you always gotta take time to get to know someone. And ladies, make sure the guy you're getting with doesn't have any criminal record. If a guy has a criminal record, I don't care what he looks like. I don't care how handsome or how tall he is. Do not get with somebody like that. Stop sacrificing your happiness for vanity. Stop sacrificing your kid's happiness for vanity. Because when you bring these men into your home and into your life, there's a negative effect on your family and on your kids. And obviously on you. Because now your life is in danger. It's like jumping into a shark infested water and not expecting to get bit. Don't surround yourself with people of low moral value. Ask yourself, before you fall in love and get in bed and get emotionally attached, ask yourself, is this a good man? Is this a man that's going to protect me? Is this a man that's going to be a good partner to me? Love and cherish me and respect me as a woman and not think that he owns me? That's the questions you need to ask. Don't get with criminals. Don't get with drug addicts. Don't get with sexual abusers and, and don't get with bad people basically it's pretty simple now i don't know how the beginning of crimea's relationship with her ex-husband started i have no idea there's no information available but she was married to him and they had three kids i don't know at which point he started to abuse her but he did if you read her um her gofundme page you would see that she said he was abusing her and if you didn't believe that the fact that he drove a thousand miles to kill her and her boyfriend tells you she was telling the truth. A lot of people, they're quick to not believe. I see people in the comments, they saying, oh, she had to do something to him. No, she didn't have to do anything to him. And whatever she did to him, I guarantee you, 
It's not a death sentence. I guarantee you that. Some people are just bad people. You don't have to do nothing to them. You could be walking down the street, minding your own business. That person see you and decides, hey, I just feel like killing someone. I just feel like robbing someone. I just feel like raping someone. This person has no moral values. Why are people in the comments, especially men, making up excuses for criminals? A guy in the comments said to me, why am I pandering to women? I'm not pandering to women. I'm just telling the truth. I'm just calling it like it is. The fact is 99% of women who are being killed are being killed by men. Not just being killed by men, they're being killed by men who they're in a relationship with or who they just left a relationship out of. That's a fact. That's not pandering. That's the truth. How many men you think call the domestic hotline? Please tell me, how many men do you think call the domestic hotline and ask for help? Because a woman is, is um, stalking them or trying to kill them or trying to rape them. Let me tell you how much men call. 0, 0.0. It's all women. Take your head out to the sand and wake up. You know what I said to that guy with that stupid comment on YouTube? I said, don't you have a mother? Don't you have a sister? Don't you have a cousin? Don't you have any female relatives? Don't you have a heart? Don't you have any common sense? We should be standing up for what is right. Doesn't matter if a woman kills a man or a man kills a woman or somebody kills a child. We, as good people of this world, we should stand up for what is right. Right is right and wrong is wrong. You can't be right and wrong at the same time. If someone does something wrong, whether they're your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your son or your daughter, you should speak out against it. You should tell them that they're wrong. You shouldn't stand there and support them unless they admit to their wrong and they serve the time in prison like they should. Don't support murderers. Don't support rapists. Don't support abusers. Just cause they're your friend or your husband or your brother. Do not support them because you're creating this cycle. You're creating a shelter for the abuser. What you should be doing is creating a shelter for the abused. Wake up. Everybody's walking around acting like they're good. When something goes wrong, they turn a blind eye. You know there are anonymous hotlines that you can call if you see something that's wrong. If you're in fear of your life, there's anonymous hotlines you can call and report stuff. Don't act like you don't know that. Do better. Because I'm telling you this, okay? When somebody gets killed, people don't really care about it. The only time they care is when somebody that they love die. We need to stop this cycle. We need to protect good people and speak out against bad people. Because I believe there's more good people in this world than there's bad. I believe that in my heart. Women should not be scared to lay down every night next to a man who claimed to love them. That's a fact. Women should feel protected. Not just women, everybody. Women, men, kids, everyone should be walking this world and feel safe. A woman should be able to go and jog and come back in one piece no matter what time of day or night. She shouldn't have to, she could only jog in certain hours because there's predators out there. That shouldn't, that shouldn't have to happen, but that's just the way it is. That's just the way life is because there are a lot of bad people out there. There's no change in that. What I'm trying to say is that bad people are not going to go away, but good people, we need to bind together. We need to stand up against the bad people in the world. Crimea was a great mother. I went to her Facebook page and I saw the videos with her and her kids. Broke my heart. She loved her kids. I can tell. She's a good woman, just living her life. She's working, good citizen. She's not doing anybody wrong. She got out of her abusive relationship. Six years after, the guy still come back and killed her. Unfortunately, her boyfriend, Sean, innocent guy, got killed because he was in a crossfire. Sean was a good guy. Eight years, army vet. He wanted to get into the secret service. The guy was just a, basically a good guy. He lived his life. He works hard. He's one of the good people in the world. And his life is ended at 34. He's gone. Between Crimea and Sean, they had seven kids. Now these kids, seven of them, they either don't have a mother or they don't have a father. And the youngest one doesn't have a mother or a father. It's a very tragic, very sad situation because someone decided he's going to drive a thousand miles to kill these decent good people. Gotta stop, man. Gotta stop. But let me tell you something. You have to protect yourself because I support the cops. But let me tell you something. The cops are only useful when people die. When, when there's a murder case, you see 12 cop cars outside. You see everybody from the station down there investigating. If you, if you call the cops for abuse or something like that, not much they can do. Because of the laws in the U.S., there's not much they can do. You might get a restraining order, but a restraining order is just useless. So you got to protect yourself. You need a village to protect you. 
The sad part is, I don't know how much more, what more Crimea could have done, but if Crimea have three kids with her ex, it's almost impossible to escape from him because he's the father of the kids. So one way or another, he's going to be in her life. One way or another, he's going to have access to her via the kids. And that access means he could decide to kill her at any moment. A lot of these tragedies don't have to happen. And that's the sad part of it. It doesn't have to happen. It's just she's selfish. It's usually men. They decide that they should kill a woman for whatever reason. Usually the reason is not, it's not justifiable. It's never justifiable. The only time you should be killing someone is if it's self-defense. That's it. There's no other justification. I see people in the comments, some people in the comments, trying to blame the victim and trying to justify. I don't know you could justify that. I don't know you could justify murder unless you're just as depraved as the murderer. That's why I tell some people, I say, listen, I'm sorry for your girlfriend. I'm sorry for your wife. Because if you're thinking like that, if you're thinking it's justifiable that a man should kill a woman because she break up with him or whatever he thinks in, a, in his head that she done, then something's wrong with you. Let me tell you something. I've been in a relationship where I got my heart broken badly. And I never think for once that I should kill the woman. Never. I just left because let me tell you something. When you kill someone, you're not just killing them, you know. You're killing their family also. You're killing their kids. Because their family and the kids might be alive, but for the rest of their life, they're slowly dying because of that pain you left them with. That's one. Two, there are a lot of other women in the world. I don't understand how people could decide, oh, let me go kill her and then go sit in jail for the rest of my life. I don't understand that logic. I mean, a lot of them think they're going to get away with it, right? Because this guy, David, he, he, he drove back to Florida thinking nobody's not going to recognize that. Once the cops start investigating, it was easy to figure out he was the perpetrator. Very easy. Cell phones, cameras everywhere. You can't escape it. So if you have the balls to, to, to drive a thousand miles to kill someone, you should have the balls to walk into the, the precinct and say, hey, I did it. Give me the death penalty. That's what I want to hear. I did it. Give me the death penalty. I don't want to see lying and crying and tail between the leg and I didn't do it and I couldn't. No, 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 no. You want to be a big bad man? You want to be evil? You want to be gangster? When it's time to go to jail, I want to see you first in line. When it's time for the hangman, I want to see you first in line. This nonsense got to stop. Let me say this. I appreciate all the comments. I try to respond to every single one because I appreciate people taking the time to watch the video and I hope that the information in this video could make people more aware, make, make people aware of their own safety, make people aware that we all should be standing up for good people in the world. And we all need to do our part. We all need to be part of the village that protects people who are abused. Because let me tell you something, it could happen to you. And if you think it can happen to you, you're lying to yourself. And if it doesn't happen to you, it could also happen to any one of your family members. It could happen to any one of us. Don't wait till it happens to do something. Do something now. If you know someone who's been abused, help them out. Do something to help. Don't wait till the person is dead. Cry at the funeral and say what ifs. That's not going to help nobody when somebody's already dead. Let me tell you something. Crimea didn't deserve to be killed. Sean didn't deserve to be killed. And the kids didn't deserve to be left orphans. Let's stand up together and help change the world. Protect yourself. That's it for this video. I see you guys in the next one.